Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to look over several pieces of concept art from the 1998 Godzilla animated series. Please consider both liking and subscribing. It really helps. There's a lot of interesting pieces here on what certain creatures would have looked like. Phil Barlow was the lead designer on the show and came up with many of the characters and monster designs. The man's a very talented artist and it's quite a shame some of these never got to see the light of day. But before we start with the creatures, let's take a look at the human cast first. This first piece here was the initial pitch for the art style on the show, based on the style of American cartoonist Milton Caniff. You may notice right away that both Monique and Craven are absent here, as they were most likely late additions to the group. It looks like Audrey would have been part of the team instead of going on her own like she did in the show, and it looks as though there was a new character here named David. I'm not sure in what role he would have served here, and thinking back to it, I don't really recall a character named David in the movie. So like Randy here, he was most likely a new player exclusively for the TV show. Barlow mentions in his notes about this piece that these characters were designed before the movie even came out. So he was pretty much just working from a handful of pictures of what the actors looked like in the film. I wonder if he got Nick confused with someone else though, because I mean, Matthew Broderick didn't have a beard in the movie. A second art piece shows the main cast again, this time with Craven and Monique. Though you may have noticed that the designs are different from that of the actual show, especially with Nick and the girls, all having different looks compared to their final counterparts. Randy's now wearing a collared shirt, and Craven's now sporting a dress shirt and tie under his lab coat, rather than the yellow shirt that he ends up with. Both these looks were Barlow's pitches to the executives for the show's art style. They were both rejected and nearly got him fired from working on the series. But he was given a third chance and came up with the designs we know the cast by today. There are some more images of what the characters looked like in their early stages. And these were included in an issue of G-Fan Magazine, which was mostly a special issue dedicated to the show. You'll have to forgive the shoddy camera work on these. I am using my phone to capture these images. Here are some early looks on both Craven and Major Hicks. Admittedly, I kind of like these first attempts. Their expressions read better to me compared to their deadpan looks they'd receive in the show. And they even look closer to their film counterparts. Randy here looks like a bully character from a school cartoon. An animal has the face of a swindler. Audrey seems to look closer to that of Maria Petillo, the actress who plays her in the film. Nick. It seems like they were trying a little too hard to make them look like a, um, what do you call these type of guys? Nerdy studs? Admittedly though, I like these first two attempts better compared to the bland looking design that he would ultimately end up looking like. Elsie's look is kind of hard to see here since for whatever reason they squished the image but we'll have to make do. The art on the left seems to be somewhat of a drawing of Elsie's film actor, Vicky Lewis. At least that's how I see it. The art on the right though shows a more cartoony approach. Again, it's a little hard to tell here, but Elsie looks like she has a different hairstyle here, with it being pulled back in a ponytail. And she definitely seems more youthful too. An interesting note that Barlow mentions is that the anchor for his art, Helen Mayer, signed her likeness away to the final design of what Elsie would look like in the show. I'd show you a picture of this person to compare them, but there doesn't seem to be any of this individual that I could find. Monique is the final character and she didn't really go through much of a drastic change, of course other than switching up her hairstyle. Finally, the team was going to have a chihuahua dog, based on the Taco Bell mascot that was advertising the movie at the time. The dog was cut from the show simply because of the size difference between it and Godzilla. It would have caused a headache between the animators putting them together on screen, so the dog was dropped. Okay, so now on to what you really want to see. The creature designs. I guess we can start with this thing here called the Gorgon, or sometimes referred to as Thingy. Now hold back your comments, I already know what this thing is, but for the few who don't know, when Godzilla the series was in development, the creation of the show had to be kept secret. The show was being worked on right when the movie was still being shot. So a lot of things, mainly Godzilla's design, had to be kept under wraps. Thus the show was giving the working title, Heat Seekers, and Godzilla was drawn up as the Gorgon. You can even compare some of the drawings between the Gorgons to that of Godzilla's and see how perfectly they match. While on the topic of Godzilla, he was originally meant to score an eyepiece that would help Nick communicate with him. 
They were also going to give him a saddle that would allow the characters to ride on him for whatever reason. Thankfully, the designers saw how stupid this was and just scrapped all this away. Though the eyepiece, however, would actually make it in a later episode to where it would help Godzilla fight off mutant hummingbirds. Yes, mutant hummingbirds. If you've seen the show in its entirety, you might have picked up that, besides Godzilla and C-Rex, none of the monsters in the intro to the show appear in any of the episodes. So, why is that? Well, Barlow mentions that back in the pre-production stages of the show, before he had received any scripts or concepts for it, Barlow decided that he and his team at Zoom Media to just start drawing random creature designs as a way to audition them to help him work on the show. Several of them were used only for the intro and given Toho kaiju names like Gigan, Megalon, and Manda. They weren't drawn with those designs in mind but were done as more as an in-joke. The spider used in the intro was called Gus the Spider and it's not the widow spider that's used in the show as some may confuse that on. The name Gus could have most likely came from one of Barlow's assistants, Matthew Brady, whom he called Gus because there was already a Matthew working for his company. There were some other creature designs named after other Toho Kaiju, like Angilas, which is Angaris, Biolante, Gabara, and Mogira, who interestingly gets a mechanical and organic look. I'd say these creatures were probably considered for the intro as well, but the fact that Mogira has two looks, and one being that of a machine, makes me think otherwise. It could possibly be an early concept for the Robo Yeti, as when we first see the machine, it looks to be an organic creature, but once the skin burns away, it's revealed to be a robot. I'm just guessing on this one though. This design here of the Crustaceous Rex shows the monster sporting a more bulkier appearance to what it would receive in the show and now has more than four tentacles under its body, and now appears to have a jagged set of teeth inside its mouth. The design of the Komodo Trex was originally meant to be a female Godzilla, looking more thinner than the big G we see in the show, and even showing to have less and smaller dorsal plates on her back. The design was changed to the final look we see in the show, de-Godzilla-fying her with only the atomic breath remaining. This change comes from the producers on the show, who didn't want more than one Godzilla appearing, even though the series did already show more than one. Speaking of, Cyber Godzilla shown here appears to have a different head design with several horns protruding from its face. The headgear seems to resemble that of the Leviathan aliens, which makes sense considering that this was their strongest creature. It's not known why this piece was rejected, the only thing we get is that there's a small note under the picture saying it was no good. The mutant manta ray from the wedding episode was originally meant to be a bird type creature, but was changed due to the writers claiming that there was already many giant bird monsters in the other episodes. So it was changed to a manta ray. The concept art for the creature had it looking very different from what it would end up looking like, with it once sporting a slicker look with a grappling tail. Personally, I like this design a lot more than the final look. The growing creature. In an interview with William Stout, the writer for the episode Where Thy Sting, one of his pitches for an episode was to have a type of creature that would consistently keep getting bigger and bigger. Even when losing limbs, it would simply regenerate them back. This was probably rejected for being too similar to that of an earlier episode, Talkin' Trash, which features the nanotech creature, which was consistently growing whenever it would consume things. Finally, we have this advertisement for the cancelled Godzilla the series toy line, which features both Gus and Manda from the intro, and also features two other monsters that never appear in anything. They don't even have names. Given Gus and Manda are here, these are most likely designs that Barlow and his team did before they actually started working on the show. Speaking of the toy line, that also had some unused designs that borrow from established creatures from the show. These redesigns were not done by Barlow, but instead by Bill Bronson, who is a concept toy artist for various action figure lines. The first one we see here is of the Cyber Dragonfly from the Winter of Our Discontent episode. One of the fly's more obvious differences is that of the wings being replaced with three propellers. In fact, upon further inspection, you can kind of see the design as a whole resembles that of a helicopter. The sewer rats from the cat and mouse episode have this very slick looking hybrid of both a rat and a velociraptor. I absolutely love the look of this thing. 
and it really stands out nicely compared to the final rats, which in my opinion are just kind of boring looking. Phil Barlow mentions that whenever the team was running out of ideas for creative creatures, they would just go through a list of vermin and see what kind of animals they can mutate, and rats were first on the list. Kind of a shame they didn't come up with this look though. Finally, the design that has the most drastic change is El Gusano. It is a radically different look from that of the giant worm. So much so, you wouldn't even think that this was the same creature. Admittedly though, I do like the look of it, but it just doesn't fit with Godzilla the series. It akins more to that of Resident Evil if anything, with the multiple mouths and the eyes attached to the hand mouths. I still think it's a cool look though. Again, these last three were planned for a toy lineup and not for the series itself. It's kind of weird because some of the monsters did receive their proper looks for the action figures. I don't understand why these specific three had to have their looks altered, but this whole set never came out anyway, so it doesn't matter much. But that's all the concept designs that were never used for Godzilla the series, or at least what the public is able to view anyway. I know there's got to be much more of this stuff out there that we just can't see yet. And I really hope that, for whatever reason, more of the star work is able to surface, so we can get a look at what could have been. But what do you all think of these? Were there any designs that you wish made it into the show? Or were you happy of what they turned out to be in the final product? Leave your thoughts in the comments. With that being said, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now Godzilla fits in a Taco Bell kids meal. Get him or one of four other action toys. Tanks, fighter jets, baby Godzillas, and helicopters. Only a Taco Bell.